John here. As the channel's getting close to becoming monetized, with almost a thousand subscribers and 4,000 total watch hours, I thought that it'd be fun for us to look at how much the channel's going to make after that monetization switch is flicked. The channel's all about the truth behind making money, so I think that it's important for you to understand why channels in the business and finance niche earn so much more money than channels in other niches. First, I'll explain what CPM and RPM mean, and then we'll look at how much money other finance channels are making to help us estimate how much money we're going to make over here when we do become monetized in the next month or two. So let's just start with the basics. Advertisers pay to show ads on YouTube videos. You know, those short ads that run at the start, end, and sometimes in the middle of videos that you can usually skip after five seconds. Advertisers pay money to YouTube each time their ad is shown on a video. They have to pay each time the ad is shown, regardless of whether the person seeing the ad clicks on it through to their website or whatever, or not. This is known as paying per impression rather than paying per click. YouTube keeps 45% of the money paid by the advertiser and it pays out the other 55% to the channel on which the ad was shown. YouTube as a platform don't have to do this. They could have their business model as where they just keep all of that ad money and they end up with billions of extra dollars in their own pocket each year. But by paying YouTube as a large amount of that advertiser money, that encourages the creation of more and better content, which gets more people on the platform, which means that more people are watching, more ads are being shown, and then therefore YouTube is making even more money from showing ads. It's like that old saying, does YouTube want 100% of something smaller or a smaller proportion of the money made from something absolutely massive. An advertiser pays some money to YouTube for each 1,000 impressions of their ad. Just for example, they might pay, say, $5 per thousand impressions. In that case, the advertiser's CPM, or cost per mil, is $5. Mil in Latin means thousand, so CPM just means cost per thousand showings of the ad. Of that $5 for the thousand impressions, YouTube keeps $2.25 and $2.75 goes to the channel, and they get that after 1,000 showings of the ad. But note that that is isn't after 1,000 views. The ad could be shown multiple times during the same video view. That's because ads can be shown at the start and end of a video and during the middle if the video is more than eight minutes long. So let's say that on average, someone watching a video gets two ad impressions. That means that the video only needs to get 500 views to get that 1,000 ad impressions for the channel to get that $2.75. So after 1,000 views of the video, the ad would have been shown 2,000 times and the channel would have earned $5.50. That $5.50 amount, how much the channel makes per thousand views is known as the RPM or revenue per mil. So RPM is how much a channel earns per thousand views where ads can show multiple times per view. And CPM is how much an advertiser pays YouTube for 1000 showings of their ad. So now the more exciting bit, let's look at the RPMs of some other finance channels on YouTube. Andre Jick made a video recently about how much his channel makes. The numbers blew my mind. So it's a great one to start with. In his first year on YouTube in 2019, Andre came in with some great quality videos and so he pretty much got monetized straight away. He made $123,000 from YouTube ads in the whole of 2019 from 22.5 million views, which works out at about a $6 RPM, $6 per thousand views. Not bad at all. But then in February 2021, just over a year later, he made $170,000 just in that month, more than he made in the whole of the year of 2019. He made that $170,000 from about 5.6 million views, which works out at a $30 RPM. Next, let's look at how much Graham Stephan's making. In the whole of 2020, his main channel, which is purely business and finance content, got 134 million views and made over $2 million, and it worked out at about a $16 RPM. And then in February 2021, that number was even higher, at $20 per thousand views. Daniel Inskeep has a newer and smaller channel compared to those guys, but he still exclusively makes finance content, so it'll be a good comparison. After a full year on YouTube, being monetized for pretty much all of it, he had six million million views and made $80,000, which works out at a $13 RPM. And just one more for comparison, looking at an even smaller finance channel and one that's based in the UK like mine is, Ollie Ear Online. In this channel's first monetized month on YouTube, it got 160,000 views and got $1,000 for that, which works out at a $7 RPM. So it looks like finance channels start out with a smaller RPM, but then after about a year, as more time has passed and the channels become larger, that RPM number increases. Andre Jick and Ollie Ear Online Online started out with RPMs of six and seven dollars in the first few months, but now Andre's RPM is closer to thirty dollars, which is just insane. Daniel Inskeep got a thirteen dollar RPM for his first monetized year on YouTube, and Graham Stephan's been around for four, maybe five years on YouTube, and his RPMs in the sixteen to twenty dollar range. So basically, based on this, I say that new finance channels can expect between six and thirteen dollar RPMs in the first few months up to a year, and then after that, in the years to come, a finance channel can get between sixteen 
in $30. Given that, if the channel were to become monetized right now with the 13,000 views a month that I'm getting, which isn't even a lot of views, the channel would be earning between $80 and $170 a month. Not bad for a channel of this size. Then I'd just need to increase the views 10 to 20 times to make that number a proper salary for someone living here in the UK. I just think that it's amazing that a channel not much bigger than what this one is now can provide a full-time salary. And that's just money from AdSense. We've not even considered money earned from affiliate links, sponsorship deals, digital product sales, merch, spin-off channels, and all the other ways that you can make money from a YouTube channel. But anyway, back to those crazy $30 RPMs. You're probably wondering why it is that finance channels make so much more money than channels in other niches that have RPMs of say five, three, even just $1, where those channels have to get 10 times as many views or more to earn the same amount of money. The reason is that advertisers that are running ads for money related products and services like business courses and stock trading accounts, well, those companies can afford to spend more to acquire a new customer than say a toy company, because the profit made from selling a $500 business course might be $500. It's all profit because let's say it's a digital course, it's already made and it doesn't cost anything to reproduce. So when one's sold, it's entirely profit. Profit, and a lot of it. But a toy on the other hand might only make $5 of profit, so it only makes sense for the advertiser to spend less than $5 on advertising it for each unit of the product that they sell. Meanwhile, the course advertiser can afford to spend up to $500 to sell the course to just one person. Basically, advertisers of financial products and services can afford to spend more on advertising than advertisers in other niches. And that's reflected in the CPMs and RPMs of those other niches. A toy channel, for example, might have an RPM between $1 and $3. Meanwhile, a business and finance channel will have a much higher RPM, between $6 and $30 like we've seen, and even higher in some cases. Knowing coming into this that business and finance channels make the most money, I set out to make a channel in that niche. But making money isn't the only purpose of this channel. It's to help people who don't know as much about personal finance and investing, to help them set themselves up even better financially. It's also to show what business things I'm working on to hopefully attract you guys to want to come and work with me on future business ventures. And most importantly, it's to make entertaining videos that you guys enjoy watching and that I enjoy making. And with that, thanks for watching to the end of the video. This is Debt to Millionaire. Subscribe.